All right, uh, GM, GA, G, everybody, welcome to what's going to be another great Dev and Tell. So if you didn't know, Dev and Tell is a uh, window for people to showcase anything they've been working on, such as uh, unit testing best practices, automation goodies, smart contracts, how to structure a project, etc. Basically, if you've got a passion for something, this is your opportunity to share it with the community. And today I am happy to introduce to you Yash, who will be giving us a overview of Biconomy. Take it away, Yash. Thanks, thanks. Hi everyone, how's it going? So I think I'll start with my introduction. Uh, so I uh, graduated in 2020, like when Corona started. And during that time, Biconomy was starting out. So I joined Biconomy uh, from my college, first as an intern, um, then as a like full-time developer. And uh, I was looking into all sides of things that was happening. Um, we had like gasless SDK, we were looking on meta transactions, how to um, like do all these forward flows, paying in ERC20 tokens. So all that stuff like I've been looking into both on the front end, back end and uh, the blockchain side for the past two and a half years. And uh, recently like uh, we have been working on this bike on me SDK, which is like a one-stop solution to um, everything and to improve the UX, be it like getting the next billion users to Web2 with a lot of cool stuff. Um, such as like social login, uh, fiat on ramp, uh, have like those one click experience where the DAP does not have to um, kind of uh, like do a lot of transactions, like 10, 20 transactions, just to like simply stake and uh, maybe uh, stake on some lap uh, LP and like do some cross chain transactions. So all that stuff we have been working on and we recently released um, our SDK. I'll share my screen. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes. Cool. Um, just a second. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, as I told you, like for the past uh, two years, like we have been focusing on uh, building the gasless product and uh, the hyphen. Uh, the gasless was usually around like the meta transactions. Uh, it followed an EIP two seven seven one standard, and we had like huge volumes on this, and we had like people. Uh, like people like Sandbox, TYDX, uh, Zedrun uh, coming along and a lot of Web2 uh, giants like such as JP Morgan, uh, Dodge Gamana and st all those uh, big companies uh, come over and like they simplified the UX for the user which was basically the gas abstraction part and uh, we had like huge uh, numbers in uh, on, the, on those sides. Now uh, on hyphen, like we started, I think around one and a half year ago, which was a cross chain bridge. It is the fastest uh, bridge uh, out there. And we have done like high numbers on there also. And like things are going pretty smoothly on both ends. Now I have a teaser for all of you guys. Um, let me know like if the voice is uh, not coming to you guys, just let me know. So this is the Biconomy SDK in a nutshell and like where we'll be uh, kind of like bringing all these features uh, in terms of modules, in terms of uh, how uh, these things would be improved for everyone. So it's easier to onboard users and like not let them kind of uh, stop at any step because it's too much or overwhelming for them. And then they can like simply like focus on the Web3 aspect of things rather like maybe they are playing a game or they don't have to go through the hassle of uh, let's say they want to, uh, like they just want to transact with USDC, like why have the necessity to keep, let's say, Matic or ETH in their wallets and all that stuff kind of gets abstracted away and all this kind of uh, gets um, 
uh, it gets enabled via the smart contract wallets and the um, account abstraction flow that we are following. And like account abstraction is something that Vitalik has been pushing for a long time. And in general, there is a like a larger sense in the community that um, having like the custody of your own funds and like having good features uh, over the wallets that you have, it's like a must uh, thing to do uh, in the sense that seed phrases and all those things are kind of tough uh, to get, uh, like maybe manage and everything. So there are a lot of features that can be enabled by smart contract wallets and that's what this SDK is aiming to. Um, so yeah, this is a like um, a normal flow, like how, what you have to do, you have to connect your wallet. This so like basically if you want to bridge something or buy an NFT, so you have to do like tens of steps. You have to connect your wallet, then you have to uh, go to the bridge, sign the transaction, then go like pay for that uh, one side of the transaction, then go to the other side, like basically changing in your MetaMask, and then you go to that side, you buy the NFT, and like then you are done with like uh, the whole entire process. But that should not be the case. Like it should be like the user should not know like which chain um, uh, he is she on or what is happening behind it. It's it's like like when you like use Facebook or you use Google and stuff like that. You don't know like which database they are using or which tech stack they are using beneath it, and you just like go ahead and like use their platform in that sense. So you should not be worrying about all these intricacies, like what's going under the hood, what's happening here and there. So this is what uh, the SDK aims to. It kind of aims to abstract away all these things as and more and more use case start building on it. Like NFTs came in, cross chain bridging came in, like in the future, anything that comes up should be like uh, abstracted away the user. So it becomes easier for them to go ahead and uh, use the platform that they are using. So yeah, so these are the few things that uh, our SDK is uh, currently aiming at so first of all it's easier user onboarding so this is something that we have always aimed for like even with cashless transactions was that the user should not worry about having matic or anything but like before that uh, if a user is coming from web2 uh, usually they, what there are two things that right? they have a gmail account or stuff like that Secondly, they have like, let's say US dollar or any uh, currency they have. So to easily kind of get them into uh, the Web3 spaces, first of all, allowing them the social login feature in which uh, uh, in which they can like have a like smart contract wallet or an identity on the Ethereum blockchain or any blockchain app for that matter via the, their Gmail account, it should be that simple uh, for them. Uh, secondly, obviously like you need funds, like you need on RAM off RAMs uh to buy the assets at some point be it usdt or any other uh erc20 token you should be easily be able to uh buy them and what happened is like it's scattered right now like there are there's one social login feature there there's another fear town ramp there and then you have to do all this in a third or fourth platform so the in, in rsdk like all these things are integrated deeply and it's available as packages and people can uh, obviously run and like use their packages on top of that or use the predetermined uh, one, the packages that are already there. Uh, second is gasless transactions. So this is something that we have already been doing for a long time for the past two and a half years. Uh, we were following us like EIP, like EIP 2771, which was um, a standard like uh, meta transaction framework with some contracts that were out there. Uh, but like currently, like we are now enabling this with uh, account abstraction flow, uh, ERC4337. This is something that uh, Vitalik and other members of the Ethereum Foundation, be it Nethermind, uh, GSN, and all those people are like heavily working on. So uh, in this way, like it's a not protocol change, but it's a chain that on the uh, contract level itself, and it allows you to have uh, a lot of stuff like it abstracts away gas. For a user, so technically the user does not have to hold gas for any transaction that they have to do. Thirdly, a chainless experience like users should not be uh, concerned about like if they are on Ethereum or Polygon or keep changing between like uh, on their MetaMask from one chain to another. This is a lot of hassle and it's like managing a lot of things and it becomes too much after a point. If you have like four or five chains, then it becomes too much and it's tough like because uh, one chain will be having some kind of functionality, the others would have some other and you would want to be on every chain, but the shift between every chain is too much right now. And so a chainless experience is what uh, we are building. 
in which uh, you don't like worry have to worry about the provider which is there like everything is handled like inside that uh, bycony sdk itself and yeah uh, definitely batch transactions so over the period of time like we have realized that uh, batch transaction does save a lot of gas uh, so let's say you want to approve and stake or let's say um, you want to provide approve and maybe provide liquidity or let's say uh, you are staking and claiming some rewards so all these currently are individual transactions individually you have to pay for their gas and these can be if they are coupled in one transaction it does save a lot of gas because the base gas remains uh, is always consumed and uh, you can like kind of uh, like not use that and just go ahead and batch the transactions so this is one um, feature that we do offer and like we do offer like kind of bundles where like people can come and like use predefined bundle let's say you are uh, there's a leveraging position that you want to use maybe on uniswap and you are uh, like moving funds between two different uh, dexes and then you can kind of batch the entire transaction so in that sense like it becomes easier for you and your users and the dapp developers to like envision how easy it would be for them like they don't have to uh, like go across like maybe on uniswap then they go and let's on curve and like on any other sushi swap let's say so all these things can be like kind of been one transaction and for the user it's a little bit of less hassle less things to manage and like more focus on like building cool stuff and rather than like worrying about all this uh, like small small stuff here and there so yeah, as i said like all this is possible via account abstraction and by account abstraction i mean that uh, a lot of things are getting abstract abstracted in this uh, for example the signature ex abstraction is like um, in the sense that your current eoa that is there it's heavily tied to your private key and your signing features so in a way like your signer is your account and your account is your signer so you can't like kind of separate that out in the sense but with account abstraction and uh, smart contract wallets in general like be it nosis argent and all those stuff that you can uh, separate it out you can have your custom signature logic verification logic and uh, with those help we can have various use cases let's say in the future uh, when quantum computers do become a thing and the ecds signature would break as in like eos would not be secure so but in that case if like using your smart contract wallets you can have like uh, quantum resistant signature schemes that would uh, not allow anyone to come in and like break your uh, account so in that sense having that kind of abstraction between the two identities is crucial going forward because a lot of uh, uh, things are enabled with, uh, with this feature also uh, interesting uh, thing would be something like a guardians feature let's say you lose your private key but you would do have uh, assigned guardians beforehand which can generate a new private key for you and then you can change uh, a lot of stuff in that and like maybe move your assets or before the hack happens so all this kind of is gets easier currently let's say if you lose your uh, seed phrase and then your funds are gone like you just can't do anything about that and all like obviously like uh, multi sig is another feature that has been in uh, works like and been used a lot of people for a long time and like we can see the actual power of multi six that okay like um, if an account has four owners like three out of four owners need are needed to move the funds and not just it's not a one v one so one user loses their control it's gone it's not that case so it does uh, uh, enable security of funds like more uh, assurance and trust on the like wallet itself that okay and less <laughs> sleepless nights yeah. next was like basically the gas abstraction part in which uh, gets enabled in the ERC four three three seven flow. I'll show you an article by Vitalik. So it's something that has been uh, in works for a long time, and it's something that has been pushed uh, by a lot of people. So what he asks is basically that uh, there's another uh, kind of a dummy mempool, a user operation mempool, uh, which has these user ops in it, and another actor, basically a bundler, kind of. Uh, bundles those transaction and then sends to the ethereum blockchain now a lot of stuff will change for that i mean uh, this is the like the kind of the flow of things would work so there would be an entry point contract an entry point contract would basically verify uh, if uh, this contract wallet or this logic is correct or not and then it can also verify then there is a pay master mechanism in place which can kind of sponsor your transactions 
and pay for your gas and all that stuff gets uh, kind of executed via this and there's uh, some refund mechanism uh, in place which allows you to kind of pay in those ERC20 tokens of your choice and all those stuff is possible by account obsession and it's like a contract level change so it's not like it's an it's not an EIP itself so uh, it's out there like people are building on it and it's like enabling a lot of stuff and uh, it does allow you to like go ahead and like make the user experience even better for that and chain abstraction is something like uh, we are uh, building in which uh, we can like kind of not make the user worry about any chain or not and make them comfortable with any like the user experience and like the front end they are facing rather than like the nitty gritties of how which chain or what native asset they should worry about so yeah i do have a demo for you guys um so just a second so first i'll walk you through what this demo would do so basically i create a new uh, ethereum account uh, on mumbai and uh, then i'll like uh, kind of do some transactions and first of all like uh, my mumbai like account the wallet would be deployed uh, because you do need a wallet in all these senses like in all these cases and that just to save gas like i'll the in the first transaction itself uh, the wallet deployment with the liquidity that i'll, I'll add to the hyphen pool uh, those will be shown and then that uh, like uh, approve and that liquidity adding would be done so i say let me create a new account and i think it should work So yeah, the first of all, what happens is basically, uh, and every EUA address has can be can will have like a kind of a one uh, SAW, but it can have multiple SAWs. But uh, the way it works is it's counterfactual, in the sense that um, the address is determined uh, beforehand, and uh, so what you can do is like you can have funds sent to it and. Uh, look around it so like if you see like right now this is like the address that got generated of my scw is currently like an uh, random address it's currently an address it's not a contract once i do the transaction uh, what will happen is in the wallet deployment would be batched along with uh, the transaction logic that i will eventually do which is basically adding a liquidity to the pool so but before that um, i'll have to send some usdt on it usdc on it because uh, the wallet always pays uh, in let's say this in erc20 flows so if i just pull this address So what I'm doing here is basically I'm uh, sending uh, USDC to this wallet because the funds like basically adding liquidity and everything would go from this wallet itself. Like this is an address currently, but it will change to a contract wallet. And you obviously would want some funds over here. And it's like a random deterministic address. No one knows it's private keys or anything. And uh, it's like randomly generated. And what will happen is that a code will be deployed at this particular address. So, uh, and then it will become a smart contract wallet. Uh, so, so yeah, as you can see, I got those 10 USDC that I sent from the other account. Now, um, yeah, and I can see the balance 10 USDC here. Let's say I send two USDC. Uh, now this is the forward flow. This is like what we call the forward flow in the sense that uh, the transaction gets paid. Uh, in USDC, I don't have to pay like any matic uh, as such because as you can see, it's, it has zero matic and it won't uh, be required. So there's some console logs that uh, the SDK prints out some data like what all is happening. Uh, so I just sign a transaction. It's uh, 
standard like personal science flow and this transaction goes and as you can see so we have a relayer infra in place which uh, executes this transaction on behalf uh, on our behalf and it goes so first of all uh, okay let's see this transaction and also the address also i would want to pull up Yeah, so a lot of things happened. Uh, the fun thing is that everything was batched. It was just one transaction. It was just a single click and I signed and I sent that transaction. And uh, I'll walk you through every log that happens. First of all, I transferred two USDC uh, to the liquidity pool. This is our hyphen liquidity pool. And then I paid also in some USDC. Now this is an account uh, that kind of gets the refund back. And uh, this went in the same transaction. So I paid my gas fee in this. I did not like this account had no Ethereum, uh, had no Matic or anything. It paid via the ERC20 token uh, that they had. So if I go through the like logs of it, everything was batched. So there are some like wallet created uh, events that were fired. Then uh, liquidity chain, liquidity added. And all those stuff kind of got patched into uh, one essence and then they were executed uh, by this contract. So now as you can see, this became a contract. It was initially an address as you saw. It paid like first it like transferred the two USDC and it uh, paid a small amount in gas also. So yeah. And also, um, yeah, the contract creator was the transaction origin. Um, yeah, I think I can show you a gasless flow also. Um, yeah, I think I should be able to. Now what I'll do is like uh, the gasless flow uh, would be like something like currently I paid with an ERC20 uh, tokens. Uh, now uh, I would be like someone would be sponsoring uh, my transaction in the sense that I don't need to hold anything uh, now in the terms of the native asset. And then uh, a pay master mechanism, which is like along the ERC4337 uh, specs of account abstraction. Uh, they would be like coming to the picture and our bundler would be like kind of sending the transaction and then getting the refund also in the same transaction. So all this like inside our SDK itself. So I sign this transaction. Say so yeah, the transaction was sent and like it got confirmed pretty quick. So all this mechanism like a web socket and everything. So it's something that our relayers uh, send back so you can like kind of you get a transaction ID you get a connection URL like basically it's a socket server and you can uh, subscribe to this socket server on your transaction ID and kind of get uh, like updations on your transaction itself so what can happen is basically uh, sometimes there might be a spike in the gas prices so the transaction like initially centered might be like now lower gas price so it might have to be bumped up to get be, to be included so all those updates transaction mind or if there is any error also uh, that also uh, can be logged in this now if you see that hash now my wallet was already deployed uh, it will not have uh, those things and now the, i didn't pay for the like you can see there is no log or event for transfer of funds from my account for the gas only the two USDCs, uh, two USDC that I transferred. And there are some like another, all other events with which are similar. And there's some user operation stuff, which is um, a part of that account abstraction flow. So yeah, that was the demo. And basically in this sense, like that's how we are kind of enabling all this cool user experience um, so that the user does not have to worry about anything and they can like have all this stuff in one uh, single flow. Yeah. Any questions? Cause I'm done with my PVT. 
Yeah, awesome stuff here, Yash. Uh, one question for me around uh, wallet creation. Uh, so I haven't taken a look at, uh, yeah, yeah, so many questions. Uh, I haven't taken a look at the SDK yet, but um, do you offer kind of like a, a on-demand API kind of flow for creating uh, wallets or is it only like front-end oriented? Okay, okay. Yeah, so currently like it's wrapped around the SDK only. Okay. And uh, via the SDK, you can uh, create those wallets. It's technically like it's better to batch because it does save gas also in your first transaction. Uh, so you don't have to specifically uh, kind of do a wallet deployment separately then do the transactions uh, separately. So in that way, like currently it's all inside an SDK. Mm -hmm. And because the SDK is essential because you need to build that transaction, you need to know who's the EOA account. Uh, you need um, some signature checks because uh, an EOA account, which is like a normal Ethereum address, should uh, be the owner of a smart contract wallet. And uh, if uh, so, in that case, that's the, how the flow works. Gotcha. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, any questions from the crowd? We have about five ish minutes left. So many questions. That was great, Yash, mate. Thank you. Um, we're building a, <clears throat> a product at the moment, which is like a. Have you seen the uh, Vercel event starter kit, the thing they use to run their Next.js conferences? Uh, no, unfortunately, have not. No, no stress, man. Maybe I'll DM you afterwards, but. Um, yeah, sure. yeah, what the what the functionality that we're trying to create is like seamless um, wallet authentication, and if people don't already have a wallet, seamless wallet creation, where they don't have to figure out how to self custody and download MetaMask and so on. Yeah. Yep, yep. What will happen after they've done that is we'll programmatically generate them a ticket for an event, and then we want to be able to mint that via a relay contract with the gas covered straight to the wallet that's just been created. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks it looks like Biconomy maybe like solves all of those problems in terms of like um, non-custodial wallet creation and then also like gas relay contracts. Yep, yep, it does. So um, it, it's a standard flow that we have been like uh, witnessing like in the past also like a standard like gasless NFT mints. And it's definitely the user experience does get a lot of better with the Biconomy SDK because all the things are like in one flow, um, social login and everything. And then once a person's wallet is created, it can like definitely be bashed in the same transaction itself, like the wallet creation, like minting the NFT and all that can be gasless. Oh my god. Um, that sounds very, very cool, man. I don't want to absorb this call in case anyone's got questions, but I'd love to chat with you afterwards if you've got a bit of time. Sure. sure. Sweet, dude. Thanks. Awesome. Great questions. Great questions. Uh, we have about a minute-ish left. Uh, any final questions here for Yash? Going once. Going twice. Sold. All right. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you again, Yash, for, for coming on and giving thank us you. that awesome uh, overview. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Sold. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, with that, just want to wish everybody a very happy Friday, uh, happy weekend, and that we will see you back here next week. And yes, feel free to hang out here um, as long as you like um, after this presentation is done. But uh, cool. yeah. Cool. And yeah. Um, be on the lookout for pull app drops in the uh, general chat and the chat in this uh, developer's voice as well. And yeah, hang yeah. around for a couple of minutes if anybody has a few questions. Beautiful. Yeah, love to hear it. And with that, I'll stop the recording. <laughs>